once you get in, actually into the production period, can you talk about how you find it, what's most helpful to you from your producer and your line producer? How much communication do you want to have on a daily basis? How do you, how do you, mo what do you mo most appreciate uh, that they can do for you uh, during the production period? Um, I mean, you know, once you're actually shooting, you know, then I, I, I do think the the uh, the conversations have to have to kind of get, uh, it has to become a sort of need to know sort of thing, uh, at least for me as a director, because I just want to be 100% immersed in, in, uh, in my job on set, you know, which I see as, as the actors and working with the actors, working with the various department heads, getting the shots, working with my AD and my DP really closely. Um, so when it comes to notes uh, or things like that, it's, uh, it just needs to be, I, I usually don't like a lot of people crowding around a monitor with me. I, I can't deal with a ton of voices coming, you know, after every take, uh, uh, giving me, a, you know, a menu of what didn't work about that take. Usually, I know what didn't work about that take, and I need to work through it. Um, so, what I like, you know, what, by the time I'm on sh uh, I'm uh, I'm shooting, what's great is that whoever the producer is and I have developed a relationship. Even if we didn't know each other before the movie got started, we've developed a relationship through prep, you know, and through pre-prep and, and into the shoot, so that we kind of can speak each other's language. And and so I know that I can turn to, you know, on, on Whiplash, I knew I could turn to Helen after every take and just see what she, I, I just wanted to know what she thought, you know, and she would uh, say, you know, give a thumbs up or a thumbs down, you know, whatever. And it would just uh, it would just help tailor I me. Mean, not that we always agreed, but it would just kind of help tailor me. And on and on La La Land, it was you know uh, it would be the same thing with the, you know there were three producers on set with me. Um, not that they were always there, uh, uh, you know they would kind of switch. Uh, uh, but Fred, Jordan, and Mark, and I knew creatively I could trust every single one of them. Um, that doesn't mean I agreed all the time with every single one of them, but I knew where their notes or their parameters would be coming from. Um, and so I would get, you know, one or two notes maybe between, uh, 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 between shots or, or when I wanted to. So it's, I think it's, it's not that you don't want to be, it's not that you want a bunch of yes, uh, you know, yes people on set. It's not that you don't want to hear anything or any feedback on set. You desperately need that feedback because once you do a shot, you can't go back and you want to know uh, if there was something that you missed because uh, there's so much to pay attention to. It's just that you need it to be really consolidated into one or two voices. Um, and, and, and when it's beyond that, it should be initiated by you. You know, I can usually take the initiative of asking someone, uh, someone's opinion. Um, I don't necessarily need Yeah, it. I think that's right. And, 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 and uh, you also, I think, have to be, it has to, producers, uh, anybody who's around the producer when you're directing on set, has to be very conscious of not undermining the authority of the director in any way with the department heads or particularly with the actors. Yeah. So, you know, the worst thing is you can see an actor watching a producer heading. You can, yeah. you know the producer's coming because you can watch the actor's eyes like track the producer towards you yeah. after something. And I, and I have a little signal with many of the producers I work with where I go like this Yeah. <laughs> because I can feel, I don't yeah. even have to look. I know yeah. they're coming. Um, because a lot of times what's getting said is something you already know. So I try and also work when I'm producing, I try and work out just a little like look that I can give or an exchange that we can have that doesn't really require yeah. me approaching the director in any way. Yep. You know, I, mean, um, I think any of those kind of signals are great. And I think I think every producer and every director works differently. So I always find it pretty crucial to be right before shooting starts to just to just have a quick talk about what the language, what the uh, protocol on set yes. is going to be. Just, and, and it could be as simple as that, you know. It's just, it's just figuring out, that, because each person has their own comfort zone. And I'm sure there are some directors who like to be, who like to be inundated and kind of, you know, that that's, you know, that that's, uh, and then there are probably other directors who are much more extreme than myself who literally want it to be a kind of monastic sort of experience. And I think there's no right or wrong way to do it. It just No, but I think it's the, the producer's responsibility to have that communication yes. and discover with the director what's going to be most helpful to be supportive yeah. on the set. Because and, and, I, and, and the director, I think, also has to be taking the cues, like you were saying, from what the act, what the act, what's good for the actors as well. Because I think that there is nothing worse for an actor than to, it's one thing for an actor to continually be getting notes from a director, fine, to me that's part of the actor-director relationship, you know? Um, but it's another thing if the actor is standing there and has no idea where the notes are coming from. Right. You know, if it's five different people coming at them directly or coming to the director and then the director comes and channels to them and they ultimately don't know, am I getting a note from you or am I getting a note from the studio or from the producer?
And particularly, I think that sort of sense that the note is coming from the studio through the producer is very damaging to the relationship that you can have with your actors. Because yeah. they're oftentimes very uh, you know, um, paranoid about the notion that where is that note coming from? Yeah. And, yeah. And, um, Which I get. I mean, they're, they're the most exposed people on a set. You know, at the end of the day, uh, uh, you know, there's lots of, you know, obviously, you know, there's lots of, uh, uh, you know, jokes about actors being coddled, you know, on sets, but, but there is something to be said for the fact that um, for all the hard work that everyone behind the camera does to get to get to the point of shooting and continues to do through shooting, obviously, into post, when the cameras are rolling, the single most uh, emotionally vulnerable, exposed, mm -hmm. naked person on that entire film set is the actor. And so you have to, at the end of the day, I think, uh, that has to be your priority to just to, to, to make sure that they are um, comfortable. It doesn't mean coddling them. It doesn't mean not giving them a note, but it means making sure that they uh, feel uh, uh, that they can trust what's yeah, happening. Yeah, they feel them. supported and protected, yeah. and, that, and that part of your job is making certain that you create that atmosphere in which they feel safe yep. doing something which is remarkably difficult to do. Yeah. Yep. Um, in your relationship then with the studio during shooting, um, do you want the producer, uh, I guess the example I would use, you want the, the producer sort of facing out towards the studio? <laughs> or do you want the producer kind of talking to the studio and coming directly to you? In other words, I, yeah. I pref I, I've had many conversations with a producer saying, please, what I really need you to do is take care of that huh. and then let me know if it reaches a point where I need to know about it. Yeah, you know, so it's actually just going exactly off what you're saying. I've never had a... Uh, I've never had a studio or financier, you know, a, a note on set um, on a uh, uh, at least on a feature shoot. Um, I, it's always been, and it doesn't mean they're not on set. And I know it doesn't mean they're not giving notes. Um, but uh, but yeah, my producers or producer has always been the one when it comes to set to filter that um, and and uh, yeah what I was what I'm trying to get at is exactly that which is that the relationship that you're trying to establish with the actor yeah in which the actor feels particularly completely protected I think it's essential that the producer make the director feel the same way that the director yes, is supposed it, it to is make the one, actor feel yeah yeah you know so yeah yeah it's, it's, it is a kind of concentric thing like that where uh, uh, with you know actor director producer and then and, and then you know the the, the studio um, financier and there has to be a sort of a little bit of a chain um, you know chain of communication like that um, but I think you know uh, like one thing that's helpful I think uh, um, you know if you have say for example a video village kind of situation in a movie I think on La La Land we often had to um, two kind of video villages yeah, yeah. and one would be uh, very, very small, intimate. That'd be the one the actor could see. And that would be, you know, where I would, I would be there. If I wasn't with the actor, with the camera, if it was something where I had to be seeing a monitor, I would be there. Script supervisor would be next to me and maybe one producer. And that's usually it. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sorry, and the DP again. You know, the, the DP, if you the DP or or or, or uh, uh, you know, like a key piece of, of 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 crew personnel who couldn't be by the camera, um, and that would be it. And then we we would have a second video village, usually in a different room or way down the hill or just way out of sight that we collectively could all forget about. And that would be where studio, other producers, visitors to set, uh, you know, uh, 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 everyone else basically would be. Um, and uh, usually that I would never hear from that video village. Every once in a while, I think the producer with me or whoever was my kind of go to would get a, you know, a note that was maybe a consolidation of whatever notes were going there. And it would be a single text or a single message or something. And and so uh, and so uh, so we could use that as a helpful uh, added um, I, you know, because yes. added eyes are always helpful. It's just you don't, you can't let them step on each other, and uh, and that way we could be kind of using the advantages of that, but keeping the actual sphere around the actor and around the camera uh, completely, you know, uh, uh, I don't want, you know, protected. Yeah, no, I, I refer to it as the tent. Yeah, and, and with the video, people always say, "So put me there and put the tent over there." Yes, um, yeah. I, I also oftentimes don't want a chair. 
Um, yeah. So then I can put myself in the worst possible little spot where it's almost impossible to get behind me. Yes. So there's only room for the DP and somebody else. And, and I'll have that conversation in advance with the producer. I'm not trying to exclude the producer. I'm trying to exclude the, the, the company that can start to show up around it. And you'll have 10 yeah. or 12 people hovering. I mean, I, I certainly often do, you know, you, you sometimes have to resort to little tricks like just, uh, I, you know, sometimes when, I, when I'm in a, when I'm in kind of, like with La La Land, th th this, this happened all the time because there'd be these long involved shots that um, would take about a lot of rehearsal and then about 10 or 12 takes before they started to look like something, mm -hmm. you know? So you are, uh, uh, you are really kind of uh, like grappling in the dark for, for 10, even sometimes 15 takes. Uh, just with the sort of uh, hope, you know, uh, the faith that eventually the shot's going to get there. But during that period of time, I, I, that, that's the period of time where notes are the most useless to me, really. Like where it just really had to be me and the DP. And sometimes if need be, I just would not make eye contact. You know, I just kind of, I keep my eyes on the DP, the actor, the monitor in front of me. And I can sense that there's people behind me who are kind of wringing their hands going, Jesus, this shot isn't working. What are we going to do? Oh, my God, money's going down the drain. And I just have to not look. And, I, and then once the shot started to be something, then I would look. And then, then I want the note. Then I want, you know, now that the shot is working in its, in its you know, uh, more or less, then I want the note of that extra is going the wrong way. Or, you know, what do you think about, you know, switching out that color there yeah. or making the camera move faster there? Then those kind of notes are great. Yeah, and I think the producer, the I've worked with a, a lot of really wonderful producers who actually are great at saying, no, he's going to get it yes. back there yeah. somewhere. So I can you, feel them you, saying, you need like, that a lot. you know, yeah. like, no, it's okay. With uh, anything that's a little <laughs> tricky, that's more than just a kind of no-brainer shot, you, you, you usually need that. You know, you need you need uh, someone to kind of uh, keep the faith. <laughs> <laughs>